Hi, welcome to the Reclaimed Heirloom. My name's Christina, and I want to show you how I chalk painted this dresser. And I'm going to show you and walk you through all the tips and details that I did to create this. You're just going to need some chalk paint, a few brushes, and a water spray bottle. So I'm just starting with a simple base coat of old white on here. And the biggest and key thing with working with chalk paint is working with a bit of water, especially for those decorative finishes. When you're wanting one coat or two coats of one color, you're not gonna have to be so meticulous about the water use as you will with decorative finishes. So I have one coat of old white and here I'm adding some of the chalk paint in on fleur, which is a chocolate brown. And I'm literally just placing colors to formulate my color design for this particular piece. I will explain more as we get further into the tutorial, all of the details in which I'm doing. This tabletop, I just wanted to have a nice, neutral, taupey, slightly tanned color. And I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that so I can head over to the front of the dresser. And all I'm doing here is taking Florence, which is this beautiful, beautiful green color. And I'm literally just going with my second coat. So this is your play time. This is the time that you literally can make a mess and start to blend in some of the colors that you wanna use. There is nothing perfect about this stage. This is actually the perfect time to play with your color choices and if you want to change your mind go for it. If you want it to be lighter, you want it to be darker, you can add whatever you like at this point. You're literally just making a color code and you're building up a nice strong base. I knew I wanted to go something with this rustic, old world elegance um, type of look with this particular piece. So I'm taking that little bit of that chocolate brown color, that Florence, that green, and my original old white. And now I want to really start to define how I want to make my color design on here. So the key technique of what I'm doing is called a stippling. I'm literally pouncing my brush and I'm not actually doing it very hard. You're literally just going around and you're graduating your paint colors together just with a simple kind of a stabbing motion. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna keep bouncing from your different colors as each color I have, again, chocolate, green, and white, and I'm using each of these brushes to blend into each other just with this stippling motion. For this particular type of stippling, there really is no perfect brush. Use whatever you have. You can use chippy brushes, you can use uh, oval paint brushes, whatever you already have on hand. It's literally so easy and so simple, but it does require a little bit of patience. And one of the key tricks with this stippling and blending at the same time is you really don't need very much paint. When I'm blending with this kind of style or slash technique, I find that keeping my paint brushes moist with my uh, water spray bottle the easiest because the challenge and the component when working with chalk paint and doing a decorative finish is that water to paint and ratio. You need it moist, but you never want it saturated. And again, this is just your first coat going on there. So you can stand back and decide if these are the colors you like. And if you like where the style of where you're putting your colors is what you want. So I'm gonna stand back and take a look at what we have for a first coat and see if I wanna add anything else to this particular color design. I am really liking where this is going. So I think it's gonna be time to refine the exact same technique, but there's a few other little tips and tricks I really wanna to explain to you when you're doing this type of technique and blending. Mm -hmm. 
So I had already mentioned to you for this technique, you don't need a lot of paint. And now that I want to go ahead and refine my final coat, this is where I'm actually going to use even less paint. And this is where you're going to kind of what I would the best term I can describe it is, is you're going to feather it in together. So you're stippling and feathering at the same time. So let me describe the feathering I'm trying to do. I'm still doing a stabbing motion, but as I'm trying to bring my colors together, I'm kind of giving my brush a little bit of a swoop. And what I want to do is create all three of these colors to come together, but creating a hue, as well as the design of this old vintage. It's been worn, it's had some history to it. So again, at the beginning, when you're placing your chalk paint coats down, so your base coat, and now you're going to make your color designs, you do need your water. You need your paint brushes moist, you need to be adding some water. At this stage, I'm finding I really don't need very much water, and I certainly need less and less paint as I continue to blend. I am still using the stippling technique. So again, I have three paint colors going, I have three different brushes going, and I'm swapping them out. And I would make this very confusing if I was to tell you when I've grabbed each brush. So just imagine as I'm going from white to green to a little bit of a brown, I'm swapping the colors as I keep trying to blend and stipple them together. And it makes a beautiful kind of clouded look. And this is so easy to do. You don't have to have any significant amount of experience to go ahead and be able to create something like this. If you are new with chalk paint, one thing to make sure to kind of understand a little bit is when your paint is dry and when your paint is wet, it looks a little bit different. So as you get more and more familiar with chalk paint, and I'm sure many paint um, products out there have a similar um, detail to it, but when paint is wet and when paint is dry, it has a different hue look. It can be a little bit lighter or a little bit richer until it's completely dry. So sometimes when you're looking at a piece and you think it kind of looks blended and it doesn't look blended, the problem that can be very deceiving sometimes is because some of your paint is dry and some of your paint is wet. What I absolutely adore about chalk paint is it is a great furniture uh, paint, number one. Number two, it's water base. So if I go and I've created something and I thought I really liked it and this, and when it's completely dry, there's still something a little bit missing and I wanna go back and I wanna do a recorrection, no problem at all. You're not having to start from scratch. It's very, very forgiving. I am going to show you a really cool trick that you can do and it's really great for beginners. I used to do it a lot when I first started and this is going to help pull your colors together and really give a beautiful, beautiful blended look. The one thing I really love about the stippling technique is it not only just blends your chalk paints together, but it leaves a beautiful, beautiful um, texture without being overbearing or taking away from your color design. It just adds more depth and dimension. But if that's not your thing, but you like how the blending works with using the stippling, you can always use, say, a 220 grit or finer sandpaper and just take out that little bit of texture that gets is built up with a stippling technique and you can have a beautiful refined finish with this. So the big connection with your colors and a stippling technique is you're colliding these paint colors together. So you almost have to jump around a little bit. As you can see clearly, that's what I'm doing. I'm grabbing a little bit of the white, I'm grabbing a little bit of the green, I'm grabbing a little bit of the brown, and I'm bouncing and stippling them into each other until I've created the hue that I'm looking for. I want my center to be the brightest around where the hardware is going to be and then it's going to kind of basically branch out into a bit of the green and then end off with a little bit of that brown. Mm -hmm. 
So one of the key things to always remember with a stippling is you've got to stipple the colors slightly into each other and this is going to create that hue from one tone to another to another. So again, a little bit of the white into the green, a little bit of the green into the white, but not too much that it over dominates, but just a little bit. And again, don't be shy. Have fun with this. It's actually really fun. This was one of my old dressers that I've had sitting in my garage for God knows how long, and it definitely needed a little attention. So with this isolation period that we're all in, this was a great time to do those added projects that never get the attention that they should. So I'm really happy to finally get this project uh, off my list of things to do, and I'm really happy with how this is turning out. And I really wanted to demonstrate it's not about special tools, it's not about special paint, it's just just about having some fun and of course you always have to have music so I thought I'd go back to some of the original sounds of my favorites the Beatles for this step your piece has to be completely dry and now all I want to do is give it a little extra smokiness and what I mean by that is it's a very very fine and I mean fine dry brush with all three of my colors. So I still have quite a bit of paint on all my brushes, so I'm just gonna use that. I'm not even gonna dip into the cans anymore. I always love that perfect transition of one color to another, and I find using the same colors in your base that you're creating, and just doing that very, very tiny bit of dry brushing, and all you're doing is taking whatever residual paint you have on that brush, drying it out with the paper towel, and give it a nice dry. And it's almost got like a dust-like um, residual on your brush. And you're literally wiping it on, just giving it that slightly little smoked effect. If you're not getting enough of the paint, just give your brush a little bit of water, dry it all out again, and you've got plenty of paint on those brushes before you wash them from all of what the painting that you've done. So for the dry brush, just moisten your brush, dry it out really well, and lots of paint left over. Super happy with these end results. Now I want to get into our next step. Now I want to show you some spackling. And there's actually a few different terms or pronunciations for this. Some like to refer to, and I think more commonly used as fly specking. And literally, it's like a mini version of Jackson Pollock, but in a light format. So for this demonstration, I'm using toothbrushes, but you can use artist brushes as well. And what I've done is I've created uh, a few paint washes. I think there's three. And there is Versailles color, there is graphite, and there is also old white. You can use any colors to do this fly uh, spackling on your pieces. And what it does is it just adds some absolute beautiful character. As things age, things get thrown onto it, dust gets onto it, and it just adds this little bit of definition and character. And I admit, I think versus some other artists out there, I do a lot of fly specking on a piece. It almost kind of gives off this velvety kind of look with all the different paint colors. I want to show you guys as close up and personal what this actually looks like. And it might not be for you. If this isn't your thing to do on furniture decorative, then this is just an option. I think it's absolutely beautiful. But again, it's always nice to have different ideas and options. And that's all I'd like to provide for you. So again, for the tabletop is just the white and the edges have a little bit of that green. And I did that on fleur blend from the beginning and now you can see it with that bit of fly spec on there and I just love the end results. So I think it's time to go ahead and start with our clear wax and I am just going to show you a quick demo on a drawer and I'm also going to add just a tiny tiny bit of the dark wax to edges and corners around the piece. <laughs> So 
So clear wax is just going to seal your chalk paint, but when you put it initially on, it's like a moisturizer. It kind of enriches the color a little bit, but it will still dry to a nice uh, chalk matte finish and a little bit lighter like you originally had it. And with the dark wax, it's totally optional. Again, a lot of people like that kind of dark old, gives a little bit of that, what I guess you could call a decrepit kind of look to a piece, giving it that history and character. The key rule with working with dark wax is you have to have clear wax on first. So if you've applied a little too much of your dark wax and you want to take it away a little bit, no problem. Just grab yourself a little clear wax, give it a little wipe back, and you can make any correction you need. Let's decor up, let's color up, let's chalk it up. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment in the comment box below, and we're gonna see you soon.